Correct, so but the unit lines. above will be stick. Yeah, you, typically they do concrete podium with stick build above as long as you're within the, the fire marshal's parameters of being able to stick build. But typically, unless you're going high rise, you're not, you, you're doing concrete podium parking and then stick build above. So, so stick build a thousand square feet, um, you know, kitchens, two bedrooms, one and a half baths, something like that. What do you think the I'm, units would Honestly, I, I'm with Greg. I, I can't snap that off the top of my head. Um, you know, it's something we certainly can get to you, but uh, it's it's not a cost because, again, we're deve development guys. We're typically not building the vertical, so that, you know, we don't have that cost in the top of our So your expertise forefront. is in process and coordinating the teams. And, you know, and the horizontal so development. And the, and so the getting in all the so. utilities, the roads, getting all of that in. And then typically a builder will come in and build the vertical. We prepare the whole site for the building, and then somebody else comes in and builds the building or the house. Okay. Um, so before I turn it over for more questions, a couple other things that we've covered with everyone is, you know, if you if you were our representative, how would you get paid? What would what would a deal structure with us look like? Given that we're trying to incentivize everyone to get paid the day that Vantage Hill gets paid, which means the day that someone strokes a check to Vantage Hill, we've done the development, here's your payout. We're trying to get everyone paid on the same day because that way everyone's interests are aligned. So, mm -hmm. you know, is that a deal structure you could do? If not, then what would you want uh, as a deal structure? I guess it depends, I mean, because I'm not sure how the, how the deal would work out. It, you know, it might be the developer would, because developer, if you're looking for somebody to, say, okay, I want to buy this piece of property, they might say, well, I can't buy it now. I'm, I'm not going to pay you until we get to a certain point in the process because I have no guarantee it's even going to make it through, um, in which case that cost could be deferred. I mean, that, that, that uh, purchase Same price now. could be deferred for quite a while, and it may not happen. Um, we're a small firm. We don't have a lot of cash reserves. so. We're kind of a little skittish about, you know, spending a lot of time. I mean, we could certainly spend a little bit of time, but, but as far as spending any appreciable amount of time, if it was going to be some structure like that, we might have a no problem with that. Yeah, Great. So, so if, it, if, if that isn't what your preferred is, what would your preferred be? What, what, what would it look like for us? So we, we understand that you guys don't want to pay until the deal is closed. That's, that's been recognized. We've talked about that amongst ourselves. We would need a draw of something up front, especially knowing, you know, typically when a builder or developer does come into a raw piece of ground, uh, you know, ripe with, uh, with challenges, they do not settle until the plat is, is approved, the subdivision is approved. That could be a year, that could be five years, depending on what the, uh, the political uh, environment is, is like at the time. Uh, so with that in mind, you know, we could defer some of our costs, but we would be spending, you know, Based on that, you know, especially if it's a five-year ordeal, having to go back and forth and understand and, and work with and advise, you know, we would need a, a draw against, um, you know, what the ultimate, you know, agreed upon profit or uh, not profit, but uh, you know, proceed would be due to to Jansen Land. That is something that we could work out, you know, in terms of percentages and, and dollar amounts. But you know, to operate, we would need a little bit of, uh, you know, a upfront money or so, continued money. So let's just explore that a little bit more. So, uh, you know, sort of a retainer kind of a thing, what would you, would, would it be a monthly thing that you'd look for? Would it be based on hourly? Um, how long would it go on for? You know, sort of give us, give us some sense of... Our typical clients, we have a monthly uh, retainer that, that we work off of. We could do something in this case on an hourly um, if that was to help out. You, with you guys. The risk behind an hourly is if we're spending 80 hours a, a month, we could be far exceeding what our, our typical retainer would be. So again, it would just be sitting down, understanding, again, the RFP environment, what's going out, talking to the developers, and coming back and putting together sort of a, a, a solid number for, you know, whether it is a retainer or it's a, uh, you know, hourly fee. And then, of course, what we would uh, end up with at, at the end. 
So if it would, you know, just give us a sort of a, a, an order of magnitude of dollars per month or an hour or what, what, what would we, what might we, we be looking well, at? Well, we, we typically charge uh, $175 an hour for, for our time. Um, it could be structured as a as needed basis because, again, this is still very uncertain as to what, how this is going to go forward, if it does go forward, and how it's going to be structured and how long of a period of time it's going to be. So, whereas a lot of times we like to do the monthly thing, as Jason alluded to, this could be hourly because of the uncertainty over, you know, exactly what our involvement is going to be, exactly how much time we're going to be spending on it. Uh, it could be something like that with a maybe a not to exceed per month or something, I don't know, that, that you know, and, and number of hours so that it's not totally open-ended. Right. So, you know, assuming that it takes a developer a, a, a process of a year at least to get through permitting, how long would it take us to get to a place where a developer would actually have something that they try to permit? If a developer was working with, you know, if a developer was working with you as our owner's representative, are you talking a four-month process, a, a three-month process, a seven-month mm. process? I would say six months is, you know, to get a good set of plans together that's uh, you been vetted through some of the, uh, the the political process before turning it into the county to start the uh, the, the actual reviews. So, so it is an, if, if you were hired as our owner's rep, you know, how many hours do you think it would take in six months to get them to that process? That depends on the, uh, the, the, the number. That's, that's an open-ended question right this second. I would have to say, you know, in the beginning, you're probably looking at 10 hours a week. Uh, you know, you're going to ramp up a little bit more as you're going to meetings. Uh, then you're going to ramp down because there's going to be an approval process. Um, you know, average 15 hours over uh, over six months. Yeah, it's it's hard to say exactly because we months. don't really yeah. know exactly what our role is going to be yet or what the developer, you know, arrangement or anything like that is going to be. Um, I mean, if 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 you went with the uh, approach of sending an RFP out to developers, and some developer said, "Okay, we'd like to move forward with this," and their deal with you is some future, like we're going to take this through the process, and if and when we get, you know, final plat approval or whatever, we'll pay you X. Then at some point, you know, once you have the deal with them struck, you may not. You may not need us after that, you know what I mean? Because then it's but you may still want to protect your you interests to, you to an to. extent um, and keep somebody still involved to just not not on as much of a time needed right. basis, but to kind of review things that the right. developers just to make sure they're not protect your interest. Something's good, not going sideways. The other thing is um, you will get a deposit from a developer, and so they'll put a deposit down, and it's usually a larger deposit if they're going to defer any type of settlement until after an approval. So you can work that, that you can take that deposit money and spend some of it, because if they walk, typically they walk from their deposit. So you can take some of that money and potentially use that to pay some of the cost of owner's rep and, and things like that. So that, that's an option to, to have some money. That, that doesn't come into play, obviously, until you have the developer selected and you're inking a contract with them. But that, that's another option for, for being able to deal with that. Great. So um, I'll ask one more question, then we should open it up for other people so that we can stay kind of on time. Um, uh, if you were us, if you were us, if you owned a unit in Vantage Hill or you sat on the Vantage Hill board, what would you do? And is there anyone who you would say, hey, you should go talk to these people? Um, well, I, personally, being an engineer and a land development guy, I would want to just understand, like we said earlier, a little bit more, not a lot, a little bit more about what, what you have and, and just to confirm what's, what could be done there. And then beyond that, um, and I'll let Jason and Melanie uh, give their own thoughts on it as well. Uh, I would, um, again, it, it kind of depends on what the board wants. I mean, as we've said before, the one option is to just, within certain constraints, or, or making sure that certain constraints are protected, you could just take this to a broker and say, hey, how much can you get for this? How much can you get for this property for us? Um, 
or you could do the approach, like you said, about uh, you know taking it out to certain developers uh, and again maintaining certain parameters. Uh, see what kind of deal they would offer you. Uh, I think that's the way I would probably go with the broker. But yeah, see I mean, what you think. if I were on the board or if I were a, a homeowner, I would want to see a, a study. That would be the first thing: is have we engaged an engineer, a land planner, somebody to lay out a quick study to make sure and, and give us a couple, you know, give me a couple options of what is my lot, lot, lot yield going to be? Is it going to be ten townhouses? Is it going to be a hundred? condominiums. And I, I would want to see that, wrap my hands around it first, take that layout and then engage a broker and say, okay, here's what we want. Here's, here's what we know we can get that we can live comfortably with. We're not giving up, uh, you know, our amenity space. We're not going to make our lives difficult by bringing in, you know, a hundred new res or you know, hundred new uh, units, potentially, you know, 200 people coming to this one acre parcel. Those would be things that I want right off the bat before I even go talk to, uh, to, to builders and developers. Knowing, knowing what the, uh, the development community is, they might tell you one thing, they want to maximize their profit. They're going to try to squeeze in every unit possible on that lot. That's a good thing, but that's going to create a lot of angst and an argument within, uh, within the Banticill HOA, which might end up you know, not having a deal whatsoever. So I would sit down, I would do a sketch plan, understand what I can get, how it would look, and then open it up to, uh, you know, for, for an RFP. Great. Um, I'm sure there are folks who have questions. So how about we open it up for... Um, so um, just to clarify, um, I don't think it's, it's not an issue that we don't want to pay. We effectively can't pay. Okay. Due to our HOA docs, if we spend more than $10,000 a year on new things, we have to get approval from the membership. And that's like 50%. It's almost practically impossible to do. Um, or very, very difficult to do, I should say. So that's really why this like focus on spend very little cash up front. We can spend some, but it's very tightly constrained. Um, that's why the focus is there, not because we don't like to pay our contractors. Right. Um, but, but my real question is, so would you be comfortable owning and shepherding. Essentially, we need to get in front of our members. We're going to get one vote, right? And we need to bring in front of our membership and our owners um, either a specific development deal or perhaps a, um, a specific type of development for approval. Okay, so, you know, we, we, the board, will recommend a particular approach, and then we'll ask the membership to vote on that approach, yes or no, okay? And to get that vote, we're going to have to explain the choices. And so, let's just say we have a choice between podium, right, and townhouses. You can clearly put some number of townhouses there. You might only be able to put 20 there when you'd really like to put 50 there, right? right. But some number will clearly fit, right? And then some number of podium units will fit, hopefully, perhaps, right? But at what scale? That's not really understood yet, right? Where does that become economically viable, right? Is that a choice that you guys think you could prepare and get the packages together to the point that, you know, 150 homeowners who are very casually paying attention can digest <laughs> and understand a vote? Okay, and, and to me, that includes some visualization for them for what this means, right? So 120 units on a podium on this lot is going to look like this, and it's going to be a big-ass block <laughs> with windows on the outside and some parking buried in the middle, right? Okay, and, in the, and just show that. It doesn't have to be fancy, but enough that they can visualize what this means for their community. And that, I think, is going to be necessary to get that kind of growth. Is that a process you would be comfortable shepherding and preparing for us? Because that's effectively what we'd be asking you to do <laughs> for the first stage. I think, I mean, I'll let you answer too, but I, I think, you know, ultimately, someone who's going to potentially buy this property and develop it is going to want to do what they want to do, um, again, within certain constraints. 
I mean, to Jason's point, we could have a planner put something together and then, and then go out to the developers and say, this is what the owner wants to do here or what the HOA wants to do here or something like this. Or we could go out to them and say, here are the constraints as far as footprint or the height of the building and you tell us what you want to do and then we get their proposal and then that's what the HOA looks at. I, I don't know. That's, yeah, that, I, I mean, to answer your question is yes. Could we take and own it? I, I don't think we would have, you know, an issue whatsoever of coming in and saying, okay, Vantage Shell, 150 residents, here's board A, board B, board C, you know, getting all that stuff together, understanding we can't do that right this second without knowing exactly what, you know, even you guys as, as a board want to see on that, on that parcel. You want to maximize dollar. Well, maximizing dollar could be a, you know, four or six unit, or sorry, story on, on top of parking condo building, which will now dwarf everything else that's, that's in the neighborhood. So, I mean, we would have to understand that, take that, we could go out and, you know, put some, some materials together to present. Um, you know, so I, I don't think we have a problem taking ownership as, as you're asking. We just need to know again what exactly it is that you guys would be comfortable, comfortable with. A small section, you know, maybe it's the, the, the majority of, of thought process for Vantage Hill. Um, so we know what we're taking out and telling the, uh, the, the community, the development community. And if you want yeah, to add on to that. And, and I, and I get, and I totally get where you're coming from. And, and I think I could go one step further with that, is that if you tell us what area that mm -hmm. we can take out there, I think we can get to where we need to get. Now, I, I echo these guys, I agree, because the first thing I've always done, and quite honestly, at Walton, I was lucky enough to have a 30-year land planner on my staff. So I'd hand him the thing and go, draw me up something and he'd go back and come back and hand it to me and it'd be drawn up. Um, unfortunately, I'm an engineer. I like to sometimes think I'm a land planner, but I, I, I can't do it the same way. So we always hire a, a land planning and engineering firm with a land planner on staff and we say, here's your constraint right here. Draw us up the options. What are the options? Could be 20 townhouses. This is where, how would we reconcile the parking, how would we do that? This is your multifamily option, and we could have that, and whether that's what you go back to your HOA with, or whether then you go to the next step of taking that out to the development community and saying, these are the options we think, what do you think? They're gonna put their two cents on, no, we don't build that kind of thing, we build this kind of thing, and is that the point where you take that to your HOA? So there, there's a couple step process, but I think an area to begin with and that kind of thing, I think we can work with that and, and move that forward. So I, I don't think you understood his question. Okay. He wants somebody to tell a story to a bunch of low information voters with a very high risk situation you get one vote. Yeah. What I've heard you guys say is process, process, process. Whenever you're asked a question, you describe activities, sequential activities. He wants to know if you can be a salesman and a marketing communications consultant and help us sell this solution to the board. Absolutely. They don't have the time. With, with they don't have the time to do it. That's with. what that's what we do all day long. We're in front of boards, boards of supervisors, council people, HOAs. Uh, you know, I as as the developer rep on an HOA, we've run HOAs, but we always have to sell things to HOAs as well. So, and I know these guys are in the same yeah, situation. With, with, We're with, without a doubt, um, we can sell it. We need materials to sell. So, a back to that process. That, that's the that's, getting to the point where we can sell something. We can't sell from here, blank. We can paint a picture, a million dollars. What do we have to, you know, paint that picture from? So, that's why we keep on talking about process. We need something. We need to understand, are you demoing houses that are there and giving those people new units? I mean, we just need to know parameter, you know, what you expect. And it could be, you know, everybody in this room just comes up with the, with a list. And this is how, you know, subdivisions become about, you have a piece of ground, you sit down with a couple people and you start talking about what you're looking for. You want a 40 acre parcel, or sorry, a 40 acre park on a 50 acre, uh, you know, parcel. So you're 
limiting your number of units or do you want to maximize it? And, you know, so again, that's why we keep on going back to the process. Um, once we have a process, we can then sell a story. Yeah, it's just very, um, very difficult in our case because there is no one or two people who have any control over anything in this process. Right. right. We have a sense. <laughs> right. But we have very little control. We have right? a sense, but we also have a huge motivator which is the proceeds of this project are going to solve an escalating condo fee situation where because our, 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 our complex was built originally as apartments, there is no individual metering. Mm. So the highest expense the association has are the utilities, which are more than 40% of our budget. And we have single pane aluminum frame windows, including 12 feet of sliding glass doors in every unit. So the proceeds are a way, the, the, the motivation for, I believe, the motivation for the community at the end of the day is are we going to have money in order to, saw, in order to get my condo fees down and increase the value of my condo because you're doing improvements to my condo. Chris, I know you've got other questions, so go ahead. You guys, you guys have used a lot of different terms. Can you describe very clearly and very concisely what the major steps in this process from getting from soup to nuts, you're going to start tomorrow and you're going to create a development plan and you're going to do what and what and what. Just a high overview. Greg, Mel, you want to do that? Yeah, we get, I, we get, I mean. We get a bunch of people coming in here to talk to us and they all use different terms for the same steps. So I just want to know what are the steps. So I'll, I'll start. Melanie and Greg jump in um, or cut me off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. If we were hired tomorrow, you know, tonight we walk out of here and, and it's ours. First thing we're doing is sitting down with a select few of you to understand what it is that you want. We put together what's called a, you know, a, a blob plan. That blob plan will show, you know, essentially where a unit or number of units will sit on, a, on the property. From that point, we will refine that blob plan into a preliminary plan. That preliminary plan will then be taken down to the municipality, both the Reston Association and Fairfax County, and shop that with them. And, and of course, we will take that plan and make it a little bit bigger than what you guys are looking for because the municipalities are gonna step in and say, okay, you can't have this, you can't have that, we need to reduce your, your footprint. Um, from that point, we will then put together a, you know, a, a plat essentially, a uh, you know, preliminary plan, a site plan. We will take and shop that through the, uh, the, the planning process with the municipality. From that point, and this is where I'll rely on, on Greg and Melanie, because my experience is Montgomery County, Prince George's County, where the plans are slightly different. You do a, you know, but, but from that point, from that preliminary plan, site plan, you go into final engineering design, which is your water, your sewer, your storm drains, um, any other features, landscape that go around the building. From that point, you lock all that in and you go to what's called a record plat, um, which is actually a, a document that you go down and record within the land records, and that is your ultimate lot yield and what's, uh, what's being taken down. When you say shop, okay, do you mean formally submit? Formally submit, yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the, original, the original shop it's is socialized. You're socializing, socializing. Planning, plan first with the county. The Correct, county. and then once you have everything you know, understood and locked down, you're making formal submittals to the engineering departments to the planning departments of the municipality of Fairfax County. But just to clarify, I think what what you're describing is what a prospective developer would Correct. do. Correct. Uh, we wouldn't do that ourselves because if we did that, the HOA would be paying for all that. You know what I mean? Well, that's... Well, sorry, that, the, what is that? All this work? All, all the work I just described. Okay. That's, that's, you know, what would happen and, and I, you know, when a builder, developer, comes on board. Um, yeah, for, I, think the, I think the question that Chris was asking was he was asking if you were, at, were Vantage Hills owner's rep, what would your steps be for us so that you'd end up in a place where there would be a developer doing the thing that you just described through entitlement or permit? So, or, or, so, so, or, so, or is that not your question, Chris? I think, I think he's... <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to ask my question. Yes, okay. Yes. So, the first question I was going to say is, what's the process? Now Which, I'm trying to figure out, you keep saying, I'll do the horizontal, I'll prepare the site for the builder. 
and that's what you guys have said you would do. What exactly are the steps involved in that? How people are going here? We have very limited time. I, yeah, I don't, I don't I, think I, we're I actually. List that I thought was pretty good. So, so the list, the list I just gave you is the entire process to get something approved that a builder can then come in and build a, a building. So now backing up just to say where we would be. We would come in, we would get together a blob plan. We would then market that or sell that, share that blob plan with the uh, with the HOA, and that's what you guys would look at. We would share that, the, the, the parameters of that blob plan with the potential bidders. We'd put that into the RFP to go out. We would then, all the, uh, all the suitors, all the bidders that, that come back would have their own blob plan, or maybe something a little bit more than a blob, um, you know, something conceptual to share back, and we would then vet. Okay, and I guess I'm still confused. You're going to refine the preliminary plan. You're going to socialize it with the ownership, or you're going to socialize it with the county. The the, the preliminary plan would be socialized with the county. So that's that's after that's, what he just described yeah, as the blob. That's plan. after the blob plan. That's after we do our work with with you guys. And when at what point are you going to prepare an RFP? You mentioned preparing. An RFP, where does that fit? Well, let's let's, let's let's draw a line. We would do a, a blob plan and prepare an RFP. Se separate it there. Any builder that came in, any developer that came in would pick up our blob plan through the RFP, looking at all of the parameters that have been set, and take it from that point through the remaining entitlement process. Thank you very much. So, so I'm trying to understand. So, so we, I'm, I'm just trying to think through where we would then go to the point of asking our homeowners, right? So this block plan basically assumes already that you look at it and you're like, okay, I'm going to do X, right? And there's, and this site needs at least two decisions, at least one decision made, which is townhouses or, um, right, or, or multi-family, right? right? The decision has to be made. I don't think anybody knows enough information to answer that question. Okay. Right. So, how would we deal with that in this process? I think we need to understand the, the unit numbers that might come out of that, the rough visualization of what that might look like in that site, and the rough estimate of proceeds to the association you know, from those two options. Right. right. In some range. Okay. Let, let me just make sure I understand. So, so the initial vote by the HOA that I've been hearing about, that's to just go forward as far as potentially marketing this property for sale with some general idea of what you're going to do in mind. It's not vetting so, so we the actually, deal itself. So we it? actually have been organi organizing ourselves towards, we would like to take to Vantage Hill a developer, a project, and dollars okay. specific. All at one time. So you want it to, so, to be you know, all narrowed. And, and, right. and, you know, and, and that... That's that juggling sweet spot. Now, that doesn't mean that the board may not change its course, but the course that they've asked me to be the captain of steering the process towards is that we take to the community, we've looked at five different deals, we've had five different bids, here's the one that we think is highest and best use for us. It's going to generate $4 million for Vantage Hill. When it's completed, we're going to get $500,000 is a deposit. We're going to tie up the property for a year during permitting. And when we get paid a year and a half from now when all the units are sold and we get three and a half million more, we're going to spend it on the following projects in Vantage Hill. We're replacing all the windows. We're doing individual metering. We're replacing the plumbing that's broken. We're, we're waterproofing all the buildings and all of these other roofs, all these other things that we've got going on. And we're taking it to them and we're saying, this is what we want you to vote on. We think that this is the right project, given all of the options we've looked at, and this is the this is the way we're going to spend the money. And you give it to them as a package. That's the idea that we've been exploring. Right. Now that may change. Absolutely, no, and that is absolutely the, okay. probably the most likely path, right? But even along that path, the board will have to make two critical decisions. The first one is: do we hire your team, or do we hire somebody else's team? Right. <laughs> okay, that's our first decision. That's the process we're going through right now. The board is fully capable of making that decision. The board will make that decision. Right? 
but we're doing it with as many homeowners as we can muster in the process. Right? Um, and the next decision is going to have to be between which style of development does the board want to explore. Okay. And, but that's not at the same point where you're deciding. It's not the same point where you have a developer yet. Now you're, but yeah. now you're saying, look, you can. Now do, we're going down track. We can do this, mm -hmm. okay? And and I guarantee you, we can make that will be a well attended meeting because <laughs> it's basically where the membership is going to have the chance to have their say on what's the rough look we want to have. It's where the rubber's going to meet the road. Of, do you really want to maximize your dollars and have a big block sitting here, or do you want to? take less money and get this kind of block. But we have to have a rough sense of what the what the opportunity is in those two options. Mm -hmm. And it'll be very different, I suspect, right? Yes. And the board will want to make that vote with as much input as possible from the community in that process. But the board can make that vote, okay? But the actual execution of a contract with the developer can't happen until everybody's there. But the last thing anybody wants is to us to go all the way to getting a developer in that stage and then be unable to execute with our own homeowners and deliver the other half of the equation. <laughs> right? That won't do anybody any good in the process. Well, and if you do have, if, if you're going to your homeowners with a specific developer in mind, they'll be able to provide a lot of the visuals. They've built this before here, they've done this, you know, they can, they, they've got elevations, and so a lot of the visuals will come from a specific developer at that point, so it's much easier to sell. Right, but um, even the board is gonna need, the board and the rest will right. need some sense, like here are absolutely. examples of what this kind of thing looks like. Right? Oh, absolutely, right. absolutely, and that's, you know, we and can get that and kind of thing what we together. Can do. Yeah. And, and that's part of my question too. Is that something you can you're comfortable that you could deliver that package to we can, the board so that we, we can, can make ultimately more choice? with without a doubt deliver that package and allow the you know not lead but allow the board to make the decision that's best for them. Right. And, and understanding that you know you guys don't build and you're not gonna have perfect numbers, this is a question of magnitude. Right. Right. Yeah. Not is it, you know, three million one hundred thousand and sixty dollars the association. It's going to be, you know, so this might be somewhere between two and four, and this might bring you somewhere between four and six. Right. right? That kind of rough magnitude, yeah. I think, is what we're looking for. Does that make sense? So look, I, I have allowed us to do what you asked me not to do, which is to let this run on for longer than what you asked me to keep it at. Um, and I need, to, I need to respect that. I think we've sort of covered a lot of the major issues. Are there any other questions of this team as an owner's rep that we really think we need to cover? I, yeah, I had a couple, just trying to visualize all this. When we had a casual meeting with the board and a few homeowners, we were not able to, to have a vision for what could be put there, maximize the land use for value, and so we couldn't even come up with how what the constraints would be as far as what land we would allow to say to a developer, well, you have to figure out something for just right here, but maybe you could take the parking lot if you really had a good idea, and then show us the ideas, and then we'll be able to pick which idea really fits what we think would be nice. So I'm having a hard time figuring out what should come first, you know, because we can't figure out the constraints until we see a plan and maybe it'll save the upper parking lot and we won't need to bring in parking for what already exists or maybe it will. And so how does a developer